what's going on youtube welcome back to another video it's gonna be a good one today let's hope it's gonna be a good one gonna be doing some fuel tuning gonna be doing some street tuning gonna be doing some pools gonna be driving the car i've been going crazy i haven't driven the car in over two months and that's not like me i drive this thing once a week it's a street car it's it's there to be driven hopefully everything goes good all we got to do is wash it first because it is disgusting it's been sitting here I probably haven't washed this thing in three months. It's been sitting here looking filthy. The pollen's coming out. It's disgusting. And I can't be driving around like that. So I'm going to wash it real quick. And then we'll uh, hop in the car and take it for a drive. All right. Let's play the intro. <laughs> guys this stuff is amazing i mean it actually works great this is the best spray wax i've ever used look it's not even on a slant it just slides anywhere come over here that's not moving won't even stay on definitely check it out well worth the money i will always buy this from now on
make sense. You know, I had to add a lot of fuel with these two tents. So I kind of just added everything to the whole graph, the whole table. But uh, I did update to V3, Terminator X V3, uh, that did just come out. So it's on that right now. Everything seems to be pretty good. The only problem I see is my Pro Dash isn't reading the air fuel ratio, which apparently that's a that's a thing that's going on with these. That's, I've, I've seen other people talking about that. I have it on my little three and a half inch, but I don't see it on my Pro Dash. But you know, no big deal. I'm sure the the next uh, revision will update all that. Yeah, closed loops like plus or minus two to three. So that's not bad. Sorry, you know this video is not going to be nothing exciting. It's just me really cruising around and getting everything dialed in. Uh, alert table looks pretty good. When you don't see a bunch of different colors, that's a good sign. But I am still just cruising, so. So here's the first little pull we did. A very short pull, as you can see. Red is the RPM. Yellow is the boost. Uh, this is the target AFR. Blue. And then the red is actual AFR. Green is closed loop. So that's really the only things we're focusing on right here. And uh, as you can see, it needs some work right there. It's pulling 7%. AFR is very rich coming up. And then uh, give it some more, it gets better. And I mean, the AFR is staying pretty close coming up. It's a little wavy. I don't think I'll ever have it as smooth as it could be. But uh, 
you can see a little 20 pound pull and that was actually with the boost controller off so it had co2 in the line so it was just going to make whatever it was going to make because the uh the vent mac valve turns off when i don't have it on but uh yeah i mean not horrible but uh definitely need some work all right here's the second pool and as you can see it's the data is a little more usable uh this i ran it out to about 6300 in second gear just a little short pull and as you see right here it hits 14.4 pounds and then levels off to 13 and that's because i was using the new feature on v3 which is max boost allowed and uh let me go to that real quick to show you that's another cool feature you can toggle everything off so i'm just going to turn on what i want All right, so as you can see, this baby blue line is the dome sensor. So that's what the dome pressure is. And uh, you can see it dips down. It dips down right there, as well as the target dome in yellow, it dips down. And that's because I was only allowing it 13 pounds and uh, I just did that as a test. So you can see, as soon as it hits 14, it takes dome away and levels it off to be 13. There to 13 pounds. And you can also see target dome drops as well. And that's so it'll take away uh, dome pressure and give you what you want. So it's a really cool feature. And as you can see, there's the vent to the Mac valve. It vents right there to level it off. So that's the first time I've tried that. Uh, probably one of the first people to try it. And uh, so far, I think with some tweaking, that's a really, really good feature. I love, I'm gonna like that a lot. Just because everybody knows that dome never equals actual boost. But uh, let's go back to the fuel. All right, so as you can see, closed loop is a little less. Just a lot more smoother staying around the target. And uh, yeah, the boost is pretty steady, I like that. But yeah, for the first two hits, I'm pretty happy with that. Now I just have to make a little bit of adjustments and then uh, go back out and make some more hits. See if we can get this closed loop a little smaller. Let's check this cold start out. Better 
better than it ever has. And I mean, it might just be me because I haven't driven it in uh, you know, a couple weeks like that. I mean, I, I, I usually drive it a lot after work and all. I don't video all that, but I drive it a lot. Maybe it's because of that, but I feel like it's running better than it ever has. It's running strong. I mean, that pool last night was, uh, I believe that was 15 pounds too, or 16. It felt like it was making 25. It just pulled strong and clean. And uh, everything just felt good. So I'm definitely ready to hit the track soon. Since I got the radio still on, I'm gonna hit the track. Really, I'm ready to go. And that's rare for me, because I'm never ready to go. But I'm ready to go right now. It's just every weekend it wants the rain. So I'm ready to go. I don't have anything else on my list to do. The only thing really on my list is I gotta fix that transmission leak. That needs to be fixed ASAP. And uh, I wanna get coilovers on the car, on the back. I already got the long travels up front, but I want to get coilovers in the back, dual, uh, double adjustables. That way I can get the ride height right because the other weekend I wanted to take my girlfriend out for a ride, but her waiting here, and she's not fat, but with another person, no matter who it is, another person in here, it rubs like crazy. And I chewed up my radials pretty good. So I want to get the coilovers so I can jack the ride height up. That, that way it won't be a problem anymore. I really need to do that. And then uh, I got some LED light pods for the back. For what, you know, late nights in Mexico and all that, you'll be able to see when I'm backing up. That, that's not really a necessary thing to do, but that's the only thing really on my list. Fix the translate, coilovers, figure out uh, uh, mounting options for some weight ballast. And uh, that's about it. Yeah, I mean, this thing is cruising right now at 45 miles an hour. It rides good. Uh, 170 coolant temp. What more could you ask for with a car like this? Turn this boost up a little bit. 20 on the dome. Learn table looks real good now that I made them adjustments. And as you can see, it's staying solid like it should. It's not boost spiking like it used to. Real happy about that. 
uh, yellow is target AFR and the baby blue is actual. Uh, I feel like it's always going to oscillate like that. I don't know. I've never seen it any smoother, but it's still hugging where it needs to. So I feel like that's good enough for my book, especially wide open. I mean, there's not much change there. It's pretty following it pretty good. I mean, target is 12.0 and AFR is 11.9, almost 12.0. Closed loop percentage line right here. It's staying pretty good. A little dip right there from the RPM drop. I need to add a little more here and there, but uh, so far that's good. Now I'll look at the other one where it was a little longer of a pull. There we go, 17 pounds. I mean, look at that boost. <laughs> I've never seen a boost line straighter than that from this car. Real happy about that. Uh, before, I don't know if you guys remember, but it was overshooting three to four pounds and then leveling off. Now it's just staying solid. And all I did was uh, put new gates on the car and got a bigger exhaust housing for the turbo. So I don't know what actually fixed it, but I'll take it. But uh, yeah, target AFR, actual AFR, going where it needs to be. Look at the closed loop. Pretty solid, the highest it went, the max was four, four percent, and that was that little dip right there. I'm gonna pull up the learn table real quick. That was from the whole drive, I never reset it. I think the highest number I see is four right here, and that's, that's probably desal or cruising area. 3,000. Oh, that's pretty good. Like I said, you're always going to have a little bit of variation. It's never going to be zeroed out. Uh, that would be the perfect world, but I'm not a tuner either, so you know, maybe you can get this a lot closer, but I'm happy with that. I said anything under 5, I'm happy with that. Uh, just the target AFR, and now you can have a lot more numbers on it. Instead of just one number after the decimal, it's 2. You can show Lambda now. So that's a really cool feature. I don't tune in Lambda, but I know people have been asking for that for a while. So to learn table, usually I never transfer learning to base. I'll always just look at this, work off of it, and then look at data logs, and then know where to add fuel and where to take it away. For example, like right here, it right here it was trying to add a bunch of fuel. So what I'll do is I'll highlight that area, right? Go back here. I don't have two hands, but they have the quick keys now. You can activate overlay with Alt plus zero or O, sorry. So that highlighted area, that's this right here. So what that tells me that is it needed more fuel. I'm sure there's better ways, but that's how I do it. And that's how I get everything dialed in fuel wise. But you've also got to think, yeah, this is it's a little sloppy right here. That's from, uh, that's like the trans brake spool up area. I need to go back to making a fuel modifier so my graph doesn't look all messed up. Like I said, you're always going to have some variation depending on weather. It might be cooler one day and want more fuel or it might be warmer. And maybe it's too rich. So that's the whole point of having the closed loop and all that. So... Let me show you another cool thing with the open loop, with the closed loop now. So it's the same up here, closed loop parameters and learn, but now you have advanced parameters and you have all these settings. So that's where I put mine. So that way, uh, acceleration enrichment, you know, when you give it quick throttle and it gives acceleration enrichment, it won't count that on your learn table or the closed loop. You know, it gives it some time to kind of catch up, I guess you can say. Just like this right here. When you let off, when you're under 2% TPS, it won't be adding or taking away fuel for two seconds because everybody knows it goes real lean when you let off after a pull. So just like that, when you come to a stop or whatever, closed loop won't happen until it's 400 RPMs over idle. 
and my idol is 850, so 1250. But uh, yeah, just wanted to show you guys how I do things, and you know, it's probably the wrong way, but that's how I do it. You know, go out, make some pulls, look at logs, compare, see where it needs fuel, see where it needs fuel taken away, look at the AFRs, you know, check everything. I mean, just like this, base fuel VE and estimated. Let me turn this off. Estimated VE is purple, and the blue is your base table. So, I mean, you can kind of go off of that too, what it wants. Uh, estimated isn't exact, but it gives you ballpark. And like I said, mine, for now, mine's pretty close compared to what it used to be. And I think that has a lot to do with these new injectors. My other injectors, let me pull up an old log. Here's an old log from probably like three months ago, maybe four max. And this was with a lot of time spent on the fuel table. I mean, look at closed loop, 9% taking away two, adding five, taking away three, adding nine. It was all over the place. And that's with me spending a lot of time trying to get it right. And I feel like I was just chasing my tail. I was never transferring the learn table to base. I was always doing it manually. I mean, you can see the difference in the target AFR and actual AFR compared to my last logs. So I think them injectors really made a big difference. Uh, maybe the ones I have are just getting old, just wore out, I don't know. But obviously these new ones from Snake Eater, the Bosch style, are doing what they need to do. But that's gonna do it for this video, everyone. Uh, don't forget, you can get my shirt, smalltiremafia.com, with Ratchet Hatch on the back. I know this video wasn't exciting, I mean, had a little bit of action in it, but we will be hitting the track soon. Hopefully the next video, it will be at the track. Let's just hope the weather holds off. But um, let me know if you have any questions below. If you learned something, let me know. And uh, definitely check out V3. If you got Terminator X, check it out. I like it a lot so far. Well, see you guys on the next video.